Well, good morning, everybody. Today is a cool one, because right here is the A2 wind tunnel, which we've been to many a times. I'll put a link to all of our wind tunnel videos down below. Today, we are not in the A2. We're in the Big Brother Aerodyne. All right, so the very first thing I want to note about this tunnel is, yes, the wheels move. The floor technically does not move, but it does have a boundary layer control system, I'll call it. I'm going to put a link in the video description below. That's a video that the wind tunnel themselves have done explaining how the floor works. It basically controls the boundary layer with a bunch of little like channels, I guess, effectively mimicking a rolling floor. Hope that makes sense. Uh, watch that video. Um, it'll kind of make a lot more stuff make sense. But as we run through all of our runs, you'll see that certain times we'll do like wheels on, wheels off, uh, wheels spinning, wheels not spinning, I should say. So we now have that data point. Did a bunch of ride height changes like you saw in the very intro with the car moving around. Some of the tests that we did, the car was set up exactly like it was in the A2 wind tunnel. I'll put a link to the GT350 in the smaller wind tunnel down below as well. Uh, what else? Yeah, certain certain tests cross over um, basically as direct comparisons between the tunnels. So we now have the data point of the wheels spinning, not spinning. Um, we You'll see us do that a couple times um, because we wanted to see how much it would affect certain changes i hope that all kind of makes sense um as well as you know certain changes that we did in the a2 between this tunnel so effectively we will have we'll call it like a correction factor between the aerodyne with you know boundary layer control and wheels spinning versus a2 so that was one of the goals that we wanted to get out of this trip as well as just you know our typical testing parts like normal the other thing worth mentioning is this tunnel is a lot more expensive than the A2 tunnel um, and it was only Al Watson from Race Louvers and myself. Um, so we didn't really have a camera guy and we didn't really want to spend an extra minute in the tunnel uh, doing video stuff. Uh, but fortunately, this wind tunnel has a whole bunch of cameras around it. So we're going to go over some still images. And those still images are still pretty neat to see, uh, pretty telling uh, what some of the changes are. And then at the very end, uh, future me, when I edit the video, I'll put a time right down here if you want to jump right to the smoke. So I think that's enough uh, jibber jabbering. Let's uh, get into the pictures. All right, so here we are in run one and run two. Pretty simple. You can see we got some numbers with the wheels not moving and moving. Now, one of the earlier tests that we did was canards. No canards, because they're, they're just easy enough to take on and off. But the side shot is pretty cool. Because if you pay attention to the hood, some of the reflection of the hood or the gap between the fender and the hood right here, you can, oops, you can see how much it changes, right? Just from the hood pressure. So that would be lower hood pressure with the canards on higher under hood pressure with no canards. And pretty simple, the canards help evacuate the air out of the wheel well, which means the air in the engine bay has an easier time getting out. Pretty simple. But at this point, we're gonna bring in something pretty extra cool about this wind tunnel. Because the floor, you can kind of see them all down here, how they control the boundary layer, they're also able to hook pressure ports to all of those. So this wind tunnel has 260 something pressure probes along the floor to measure the pressures under the body of the car. So the two runs we're gonna look at will be canards, no canards. So here is the pressure map underneath of the floor on the Delta run between run 10 canards were off and 12 canards were on. Now these are coefficients, these are not pounds. So you can see how underneath of the car, you ended up getting a little bit lower pressure underneath of the whole splitter. It's a little bit hard to see on this. So if we just go to a run, there you go. 
Um, so run 12, you know, low pressure. You can see where the splitter basically starts. Let's go like this. Let's do a, there you go. So here's all the pressure probes under the splitter, underneath of the car, uh, between the rear, rear wheels and effectively, you know, the diffuser area. So that's kind of cool actually seeing the pressure difference under the splitter. So that's one of the things I mentioned about canards is the canards on this car, in this case, made 78 pounds of downforce uh, at 100 miles an hour while the car was at about three inches um, of ground clearance to the splitter. That's all important because, you know, that can change depending on a lot of other variables. But you can see how they give you the lower pressure under the splitter. And jumping back just a tiny bit, seeing how much that hood moves. One of the things Al always does when we go to the wind tunnel is he puts pressure probes on the front and back side of the radiator, as well as the front and the back side of the oil cooler in the case of my GT350. And same thing, the pressure difference was greater with canards than without, meaning you have a lower under hood pressure. So one of the secondary benefits of canards, which we've mentioned before, it's not the primary benefit, obviously, um, but they do give you a increase in cooling capacity as well, which is kind of neat. So putting these numbers to it and seeing how much it affects the splitter um, and the under hood pressures and everything, it's pretty neat seeing all of that. Now another thing we did was ride height changes. Pretty simple, about three inches of splitter height, about two inches and one inch. I'm gonna put a tag up here to the CFD video of this exact splitter. And the CFD in that video was done off of 3D scans of this exact car and splitter. So it was kind of cool being able to correlate wind tunnel data to CFD data. And again, just ride height changes. You can see how this is a change where the front and rear are even. In a little bit, you'll see we do some like rake and yaw and roll changes as well. So now we're going to get into fender louvers. So you can see how fender louvers with wheels on, wheels off, and then, you know, our baseline run with nothing. I'm going to let Al get into data on this. Again, link to his stuff will be below. And again, just a top view of the changes we made. Um, you know what, what runs are these? That's baseline. Uh, run 10, run 12. Um, oh, so we ended up doing canards on and off under this setup to see if the change in canards when nothing was on. Uh, I think it was run, I don't have a picture of it, run 5 or something. The delta change in canards uh, with nothing on it and canards with all the louvers. See all the pressures and downforce changes as a package. The, this is the hood that is on my car, and a couple videos ago, I installed these hood louvers. Al was nice enough to let me share the numbers with you, but it was close to 60 pounds of downforce, plus a good increase in cooling capacity with these louvers as well. Another test we wanted to do was wing on and wing off. Pretty simple. This is a test that we did in the other tunnel. One of the points of contention people have is due to the volume of the wind tunnel, you could get air accelerating around the car at different rates. So having this back-to-back -back test between the two tunnels is pretty neat to have that data point as well. And then the other thing that's cool about this tunnel is you're able to do yaw changes, ride height changes, rake changes, all that stuff. You saw a couple of the ride heights and everything already. So we did a couple yaw runs. Let's see, here is a ride height. We went through a couple ride heights uh, without any of the louvers and then ride heights with all of the louvers as well. Um, and then we also did, so nose down, this would be like under a braking situation. This ended up giving us a ton of front bias, which we were sure of, uh, but it was kind of cool seeing an actual number to it. That would be under acceleration, because if you see, let's see, if we go back, so you can see how under braking, we, we lifted up just the rear and then acceleration, the rear goes down and the front comes up a little bit. So it was cool getting a bunch of numbers with the car, you know, in different positions. All right, guys. So I walked you through, I think most of the runs, I, I admitted a few, um, but again, just like our other wind tunnel, 
videos, um, this data, Al and I are going to kind of hold close to the chest. <laughs> we give out some numbers to some stuff under certain parameters. It happens so often. I'm going to put a tag up here to a video I did how depending how you look at the numbers or how you present them or, um, you know, the law of small numbers, you know, if, if the front end was only making 50 pounds and you did a change that made 50 pounds of downforce, you know, it, it's like, oh man, it made a hundred percent more downforce. That sounds crazy, but it's really only 50 pounds, you know? So it, it's just a funny way to look at it. So watch that video if you kind of want, you know, a little more clarification on that. I give away more wind tunnel numbers from previous videos in that video as well. Also, the very last thing to note before we jump to the smoke video is that Al Watson from Race Louvers and myself have joined forces and we started an aerodynamic consulting business. If you want Al and myself to help you out with the aerodynamics on your car, link to our company, Track Aero Consulting, will be below. All right, so at this point, I think we are going to do the smoke video. So. Enjoy the next couple minutes. So we just loaded up, uh, we're done at Aerodyne, um, did a, how many tests did we do, 19, 20? Yeah, about that. Uh, but, uh, some rake, some yaw, some roll, some pitch, Right. Um, obviously tested individual parts under several circumstances, setups right. if you will, um, yeah, I mean a lot more data from this tunnel than the other one. Um, Obviously, we're kind of hanging on to all of that. <laughs> right. Uh, Top secret. Al, any closing statement? Um, no, we just we we went through a lot of stuff. We had hood vents, fender vents. We did a whole mess of fender liner stuff. Mm -hmm. Oh, um, wheels rotating versus wheels not rotating because that's one always people got say. The, the boundary layer on the floor. Mm -hmm. um, we did wind speed, mm -hmm. 80, 100, 120 mile an hour. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Pretty, pretty good day. Yeah. 
yeah so this one was a lot of fun um yeah i, I don't think we're gonna be back here that often uh it's much pricier than the other tunnel but yeah hope you guys enjoyed it and i think that's all that's yeah, it that's it hope you guys enjoyed it hit that subscribe button and i'll see you in the next one